Hi, welcome to lesson number six, module eight of the Apache Spark and Scala course. So in this particular lesson, we will be learning about the operations on the graphics API. So to recap in the last lesson, we have learned about creating a graph using the vertex RDD and the edge RDD. Now in this lesson, we will try to understand the different operators which you can use on top of a graph. We will also see what is a triplet, the graphics caching, Pregel API and the algorithms we use in graphics. Now once you build a graph like we have seen in the last lesson, you can use a lot of graph specific operators to query and uh, build an understanding about the data. Now some of the most common operators are num edges, which just let you know the number of edges, num vertices, which displays the number of vertices in the graph, in degrees, which shows the in degree of each vertex, out degree, which is the out degree of each vertex and simply the degrees operator. So let's build our exploration on the same graph that we have created in the last lesson. Remember this graph contains airports as vertices and uh, routes as edges. Now if you want to find out how many airports are there, in the total system, all you need to do is do a graph dot num vertices. And then you can store this in, in uh, a variable called num airports. So here you can see that the answer is three. And uh, when you do a graph dot num edges, it also says that the answer is three, which means our graph is having three airports and three routes connecting the same. Now another operator which we can use very efficiently is the filter operator. So let's say we want to ask bigger questions such as we want to figure out all the routes which are more than 1400 miles distance. All you need to do a graph dot edges dot filter which means I'm filtering the relation between the uh, vertices which is the distance to put it simply. And then I do a case where I say in edge, I have the ID and the source ID, destination ID and the distance. And then I apply an operator saying that distance greater than 1400. So you see the filter condition is applied to the property of the edge. So the edge has a source vertex, destination vertex and the distance. And then I'm saying that I want all the data where the distance is greater than 1400. And you can see a screenshot of the same which I have displayed in here. And it clearly shows me two results. So there is a route from airport 2 to 3 and 3 to 1. Now let's try to understand what exactly is a triplet. The triplet is a special operator which can join vertices and edges. So we understand that vertices are kind of like nodes with properties and edges are relationship between the nodes. Now if I take two vertices and the edge connecting the same, I get a triplet. So let's explore this further. So here is an example of a triplet from our uh, uh, airport statistics data. So what I'm doing here is I'm typing graph.triplets.take3. Now, when I do this and hit enter, you can see that I'm getting three triplets, each having a source uh, destination, and then we have the edge connecting the same. So let's say we want to figure out the longest routes from our graph. 
what we can do is that we can do a graph dot triplets dot sort by function and in here I am passing an attribute saying that the ascending order is false which means I want to sort it based on the descending order then I say map every triplet and print the distance and the triplet attribute to string from the triplet source attribute to and the triplet dest, uh, destination attribute. So when I do that, I can clearly see the distance between each airport. Now, remember the caching concept we had in the case of RDDs. Now, graphics also allows us to cache the data. So there are different operators which you can use in order to cache your data in graphics. So by default, you have a cache operator, which is memory only. Now this will cache the vertices and edges in the main memory. And this is the default level. So when you simply type cache, it's going to cache the vertices and edges in the main memory. You can also do a persist new level. Now, this caches the vertices and edges at specified storage level and it returns a reference to this graph. So you can probably say persist on the hard disk rather than on the RAM. And now you can do an unpersist, which basically uncaches both vertices and edges. You can also do an unpersist vertices, which will uncache the vertices but leaves the edges cached. Now let's have a quick look at the Pregel API. Now graph, graphics can expose variant of Pregel API. Graphics creates, graphs created by modern application can be very large. So if you look at a graph which is built on Twitter, which displays probably a celebrity and all the people who are following him and retweeting his tweets, the amount of data can be really huge. In a single node computer, will not be able to hold all this in memory. The way forward is to partition and parallelize the graph to involve many machines to process in parallel. Pregel is actually uh, an API which has a vertex-centric approach in processing large distributed graphs. Now, when you work with Pregel, the computations are actually a set of iterations and they are called supersets. Now, as discussed in the last lessons, graphics in fact supports a lot of built-in algorithms such as the shortest path first and the page rank. Now, page rank is one of the most commonly used algorithm. It actually measures the importance of each vertex in a graph. For example, let's say we build a graph of all the airports in the world. Now, probably we might want to look at the busiest airports of all. And I'm sure that all of you are aware of the Heathrow Airport in London, which is one of the busiest airports. We also have the Dubai Airport. Now, by running the page rank algorithm, you can come to know which vertices, or in our example, which airports are having a more importance. Now, if you take the same example towards Twitter, you can see that a user having more number of followers will have a higher page rank. Now, graphics can actually implement a both static and dynamic page rank algorithms. Now, for example, the static page rank uses a fixed number of iterations. Now, the dynamic one will iterate forever unless the data converges. Slide. Now, like I said, the page rank algorithm is used to uh, measure the importance of what is in a graph. Now, it returns a graph with vertex attributes. Now, if you want to run the page rank algorithm, all you need to do is do a graph.pagerank and then you have to pass a tolerance value 
and then do a dot vertices. So to wrap up, in this particular lesson, we have introduced the graph operators with some examples and we also introduced the concept of triplets. So that summarizes the lesson, the module and the Spark course itself. I wish we had an engaging journey so far and I believe that I was able to contribute something to your knowledge. Do practice and keep up with the technology and I wish all the very best for each and every par participant of mine in the future. That's all for this folks. Have a great career ahead. Bye. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise a support ticket. Thank you.